at 7 o'clock by my watch. <clears throat> okay. I'll call the uh, October 9th meeting of the Planning Board to order. And first on, our, on the agenda is uh, Conservation Commission with proposed zoning amendments. Yeah, might as well. So I'm Sarita Fry, um, Saddleback Mountain Road, and Chair of the Conservation Commission. I'm Haley Andriozzi. I live on South Road, and I'm a member of the Conservation Commission. And I don't know, Sylvia, if you were going to introduce this, or you would like us to, or? Um, I think this is just going to be a sort of a... Back and forth. Back and forth. So you'll get stereo effect here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe I emailed the planning board a couple of months ago that we had started, we, we, we had come, wanted to come before the board. Um, it's been about a year since we started this process. And really a couple of things, uh, really are about how this came about. And so please fill in where, where I'm missing out. So one, was some concern about just getting the wetland regulations up to date. Um, and I think, Haley, you could probably speak to this a lot better than I can. Yeah, I think um, just the way that wetlands are, how are currently defined in the ordinance is not in line with how the state of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services is defining wetlands, which is, and they use a definition that's um, drawn from the federal level uh, through the Army Corps of Engineers. So. Most communities in New Hampshire have adopted that definition of wetlands into their ordinance, um, which I think is um, a better option for ease of standardization and just best practices across the wetland science industry. So, so that's a big part of this. So, for example, um, if you if you look through this document, and um, just to confuse you, we have two in front of you. <laughs> One is. Um, I'll call this the red line version, mm -hmm. and it shows what, uh, what's been put in, and it's sort of a brownish red, and then you'll see the cross outs. The other version is, if you accepted all these amendments, the other version is just in black and white, and that's how it would look. Okay. So I'm going to use the red line version so that you can see what we're crossing out and right. what we're proposing. So you'll see in the beginning the purpose. And um, this doesn't ch change anything except really give additional information on, on the sort of the, you know, why we want to do this, why we want to protect wetlands. Wouldn't you say that's correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the next few things are really to ensure that, one, it's in line the, with the um, DES standards but also is right to the point. Um, we really wanted to be very specific about the, the language. Um, and you'll, you'll see like in the vicinity of the wetlands instead of, for example, in A, on naturally occurring wetlands, blah, 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 blah. So it was, it was just really getting right to the point on these first few. Um, if we turn the page, this is where we get into that definition of, of wetlands. So on the top of, I'm sorry I didn't number these, but on the top of page what would be two, this is really the definition. Um, and you can see we've crossed out the rest. You'll notice throughout the document we've taken out any reference to very poorly defined soils or, or I'm sorry, drained soils or poorly drained soils that evidently that's no longer um, how things are defined. I mean, those are categories that still exist, but um, they, as they're listed here, they're incomplete. And so this does not encompass all very poorly drained or poorly drained soil classifications. And mm -hmm. so um, having the more encompassing definition of wetlands in general seems like a more um, comprehensive approach. So that covers... And can I just add, so again, please. with the, the new definition, again, is taken pretty much straight from the... U.S. Army Corps of Engineers definition that has now also been adopted by New Hampshire DES and other towns. So, so you'll see more of this throughout the document. The second reason, and this comes into play the next section in district boundaries, is that 
um, under present regulations, we felt there wasn't enough protection for, wet, for wetlands or their wetland buffers. And we know how important buffers to wetlands are. Mm -hmm. So um, what you'll see in the beginning of the district boundaries is a proposed um, buffer which says, as where you can see right in the beginning here, it's the district is defined as those areas of town that contain wetlands as well as all areas within 100 feet of jurisdictional wetland area. Now that I'm sure is will, will prompt a lengthy conversation. Um, however, we felt like that was what some of our neighboring communities have done. We looked at multiple communities uh, budding and even further than Deerfield. And uh, this is within what many towns do. Some do 50 feet, some do 75, and uh, so we suggested 100. Well, we already have 100, don't we? Yeah. Well, this is, um, go ahead. I believe the current zoning ordinance has a 100-foot setback um, for building, but the purpose of this overlay district would be to potentially restrict other uses beyond just construction um, within that area 100 feet outside of the wetland. So like driveways or anything like that? It depends. But so that's a section we haven't gotten to finalizing yet, like what the permitted and prohibited uses would be, but potentially, yeah. So not just buildings, everything? Not necessarily everything, but however well, we every, choose, however we choose to define it, yeah. Yeah, it's still it's under discussion. But we, I think the effect, the important part here is to acknowledge that the buffer is very important to the health function, values, all of that to the wetland itself. Uh, so moving on, uh, you see some some minor changes in, in the wording, for example, instead of soil scientists, it's wetland scientists in what's now B. Um, instead of landover owner or developer, you'll see applicant on that last one. Yep. And then one thing we wanted to include was something that's not wetlands. So man-made ditches, swales, uh, detention ponds, irrigation ditches, that kind of thing, because so often you might have someone who's come in and said, you know, I, we dug this uh, 10 years ago, It's a, we've created our own wetland, but we don't want to ha now have to be 100 feet away from that to put in a deck. Right. Um, that sort of, I think, was our intent here. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll see on section 210.5, instead of just permitted uses, permitted uses in the vicinity of wetlands. So a little bit different flavor there. Uh, some minor changes. Um, as you turn to, this would now be page four, took out the recreational uses consistent with the purpose and intent of this section, we did not feel that that um, really had a place in the wetland regs. Uh, if, if someone wants to do a recreational use and they need a conditional use per permit, then let them talk to the planning board. But um, mm -hmm. I just didn't think that was right. Wasn't that the idea that it, not as a permitted use? Um, so you'll see we also removed drainage ways. Uh, yeah, I'll just going back to that, Sylvia, I think we felt like it was somewhat redundant with conservation areas and nature trails being, you know, thinking about low impact recreation. And if there was some sort of high impact recreation that was in conflict with the goals of this ordinance, that would be something that would be, um, a use, uh, requiring a conditional use permit potentially. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see. As you can see, uh, prohibitive jumping, uses. Jumping back oh, yeah. to 210.5, we've, we've still got uh, reference to poorly drained soils. Yeah, I think that's just an error that, that that's something that needs to come out okay. to, be con to be consistent with the, the new definition. Mm -hmm. So again, this is a draft. We, we still have <laughs> some work to do. Okay. So. Oh, that's my fault. Let's see. Yes, that whole sentence is supposed to be out.
Good catch, Fred. So it would just go from, let's see, permitted uses. It would just start with one. Right. Okay, good. Let's see, where were we? I think we were going to conditional use. We, nothing was changed in conditional use. I talked to Rick, building inspector, and in the end we thought this works right now, don't want to change it. Coming to the planning board um, for a conditional use permit works and thought no need to change this. General provisions, um, you can see some areas where we took out all the language about poorly drained soils or very poorly drained. And the, really the, I think the only other maybe slightly larger um, amendment would be the new E. All newly created lots shall contain a minimum of one acre of continuous, contiguous upland soils. So this is something that Rick and I talked about even when I first started a couple years ago um, advising the planning board and working with Rick in that, you know, we have subdivisions come in and they can be quite interestingly uh, divided up where a wetland can can be throughout that property and and it can be even though the required upland may be two and a half acres the the two and a half acres can be spread all over with wetlands so you can maybe have small islands pockets mm -hmm. this this just tells you you're going to have one acre of con not 2.5 which is the requirement of upland for a three for for any new lot this would tell you just one acre needs to be contiguous mm -hmm. and so that's where this came from okay the boss is here everybody oh they look time sharp. for me to leave if the boss is here <laughs> <laughs> good evening hi pete how are you doing well, you came perfect timing. We, uh -oh. They love it. They want to pass <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. and they're all they good. They already voted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I can leave. It's all done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're reading the, uh, you have a copy of this. It's a Look for the red line, the red with the. I don't think it's red, but. Brown. It's it's not with strike it's all 210. Things. Yeah. But it's, it, there's this one, one that doesn't yeah, have any lines. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, you got it. <laughs> so, Pete, uh, the exciting, uh, I'll try to give you a snapshot, the elevator version of what we just did. Um, so, I've been working with the Conservation Commission for over a year in creating this document uh, for several reasons. One, we wanted to get this basically up to date of what, uh, D, how DES um, defines a wetland and their regulations. So that's one thing we did here. We wanted to improve on various sections to be clear about what we're trying to do and protect wetlands. So that's what you see really on the first two pages. Mm -hmm. um, at the bottom, and. 210.3, the boundaries. We're recommending um, that 100 foot buffer where you see right in the beginning there. Uh, we're still working on what you might do in that buffer and uh, would love to hear some input from the board. But the rest uh, you can see on the what would be the page three, if you see C, wetlands defined, do not include man-made ditches. So that was another area we wanted to make sure, you know, if, if someone had built a ditch 10 years ago, it wouldn't now be considered a wetland. So something to describe also what wetlands aren't. Um, we did discover that I, I slight edit needs to happen under 210.5A needs to be crossed out. That was something that we would take out because we're taking out any reference to poorly or very poorly drained soils. 
Um, and I think the, the only other area that's um, when you just arrived that might be somewhat controversial is uh, under 210.7, the last bullet item on the back of that page is E, all newly created lots contain a minimum of one acre of contiguous upland. And as you well know, we often see subdivisions where the lots, they might be the required three acres with two and a half acres of upland, but that upland is scattered in islands all across because of the wetland dividing the property. And this just guarantees that one acre of that is contiguous. Shouldn't that be exclusive of uh, the 100 foot buffer? That would be, that would be fine. When you look at uh, an acre, basically it's 200 by 200. If you have wetlands on Half of it's in the, in the buffer. <laughs> See, if yeah, so that's the problem with the 100 foot buffer because if it, just exactly what Fred said, you know, it gives you. <coughs> well, I make, I'm making a note on that. So, I mean, certainly in this context, oh, yeah. it doesn't make sense. So, we, right. I mean, again, this is our first draft. So, and that's why we're here. We want to get your input so that we can, yeah, make the necessary revisions. So. Yeah, that, that would be it. That would be fine to add. Yes, you have to. I, I would probably be okay. Yeah, exclusive of the of the buffer, then and then you could put a septic system and, and a house within. Yeah. And not infringe on the buffer, but if it's only an acre, you're you're probably not going to be able to put the septic system in there and meet the hundred foot setback. So you're saying, so you're saying um, it would be have to be larger than one acre. Correct. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but that then that makes the lot have to be bigger or it, it, well, it has to be drier or it has to be drier so we're just saying that there's a piece of land that can't be used well we've got what the current standard is what it's a hundred foot setback Eight and a half. but it's right it's, now it's 60 percent or whatever that what's the yeah. right now you have to have i think two and a half acres of, of dry of dry soil mm. Right. So that means. But it, but it, there's no requirement. It can be, it can be tiny. It can be scattered. I know. Be completely right. scattered. Right. Well, if you if you had the, your septic on your one acre, and your well, you know, it's, it's got to be 75 feet. So unless you want to let the, the well in to that 100 feet, but now you're digging a ditch. So yes, you're upsetting the hundred feet. You need seventy-five feet between the well and the septic. Well, the well could be in the buffer. Well, that's yeah. Yeah, the well can <clears throat> be in the buffer. Right. It's just the septic system can't be. Right. The only thing it would be is if you're on a lot <clears throat> where the so now you now it might that that easy. one acre is close to the property line. And then you have, like, your well could be in the buffer, but then sometimes you still have to go get a, a waiver from the next lot. Yeah, right. You'd have to get that. Um, so, so I'm looking at uh, 2107E. And there's a uh, parenthetical that says soils other than described in 2103A. It looks like 2103A has been deleted. That's it's, it's a I little wonder, different. I wonder if that's remnant from a previous draft as well. It might It'll be. be. Yeah. Let me see. Um, oh, it is on that. So that might go away, is what you were saying. Oh, 210.3A yeah. might. Because we're no longer defining wetlands by their soils, but by we're defining wetlands by them being wetlands. <laughs> um, so you can either, we can either change the wording just slightly. Um, or so it could out. be areas other than that described in 210.3A. 
as opposed to soils. We're just not defining them by soils any longer. Although I think he's saying that 210.3. Well, 3A, A. now talks about the map. Right. Yeah, so we have to figure that out. Okay, that has to be considered. Good, good grab, Bob. It's a little difficult from the black and white version. We have to tell what is, like, we can see what's being deleted, but it's hard to tell what's being added. But, um, yeah, it's the brown. It was red when I, <laughs> when I started, <laughs> but it I was. Can't, I can't tell the brown from the black, so if, if this is a color. Yeah, sorry, the, the copier changed it. You, can you see that better? Oh, yes, that works. All right, take a look at that. Yeah, currently, here is designated as, as having poorly drained soil. This, so we be deleting a reference to poorly drained soil. May be used to fill up to 25 percent of the minimum lot size required for subdivision regulations. So, again, you're, we're looking at uh, basically a 75 percent of three acres has to be two acres, yeah. has to be dry. Yeah. That's what it, that's what we currently have. Yeah. Right, with no contiguous requirement. Right. So the only difference here is we're talking about having a contiguous upland soil requirement. Yes. What what section was that? Because we'd have well, that's, to. Two ten seven C, currently. I think that's crossed out on the draft version. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. So we'd we'll be replacing that basically with something stating that uh, you have to have some amount of upland soil. Well, yeah, that's the new E. The new E, right, right. It's just a matter of how what we're saying has to be upland. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if the goal is to have one acre of upland as well, you know, you could somehow word it that, um, you know, exclusive of the wetland, the district, right? So the district is wetlands and 100 feet beyond those defined wetlands. So they would have to have one acre of upland that does not include that overlay district area. All right. So we can somehow make that clearer, but um, mm -hmm. that would get around the issue of making exceptions for what happens within that 100 feet. Because ultimately that 100 feet, the wetlands and the 100 feet beyond are all in the defined, would be all in the defined district overlay. So they're all treated as one thing, one area, mm -hmm. um, which makes things simple. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is we're going to eliminate the 100-foot buffer is, con is part of the contiguous dry land? I, I think is, that what, is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm suggesting it as an option potentially, that a way to get around that or like a way to make that clearer and simpler would be to somehow word it in a way where that one acre of contiguous upland soils has to be you know, separate from the wetland overlay district. So, that so what you're saying is that 100-foot buffer can't be part of the contiguous upland. Right. But that really takes a lot of land away from it people. It does. And it's, just, it's an option. And I wonder, Sylvia, if you have, you've seen towns where they have yeah, this uh, like contiguous that. upland mm -hmm. area. And I wonder yeah. how they deal Got with the including an area buffer. outside of the wetland. Right. It should be part of the in contiguous. In combination with acre. contiguous upland. That's a lot of land. Yeah. Sorry for talking no, no, no. over you. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, my, my concern is, is that <clears throat> I understand that this is becoming more restrictive. That's what this is. Okay. So if we have a 100-foot buffer, and that's part, and that should be able to be part of the, the one acre of contiguous upland soil, even though there's certain things you can't build in it, because then all you're doing is you're going to have to make the lot size bigger, or you're basically deeming somebody's piece of land not usable. Maybe I'm misunderstanding or not following, but I think what Haley is saying is that the 100-foot 
buffer I could be would not would not apply saying. to this one acre of contiguous upland soil. Isn't that what we're saying? That's not what I thought she said. I guess I'm saying I think there's a few options and it needs to be clarified <laughs> either way. But I'm wondering, Sylvia, since you've seen towns that have nearby that have this contiguous upland requirement, how do they deal with how do they deal with that? And it might not be a question we can answer tonight, but it could be something mm -hmm. we can research and see. Yeah, I think um, we need to research that. One thing I think what would really help the board, uh, we know that what is the requirement? 200 feet of frontage? Yeah. Yes. So why don't I draw up a, a parcel, a pretend parcel, 200 feet wide, we'll, and split it with a wetland and see how far with one acre and that 100 foot, what, what would that look like? Okay. I think that would really help. Mm -hmm. If you had a visual in front mm -hmm. of you, how much, because I hear Pete, this is a taking, right? So, so let's just, find out what exactly well, every are we lot's talking? obviously going to be different i mean you know yeah. because <clears throat> it, you know if, we're, if we were working with a square rectangular type lot it would be very simple to say okay you know where's the wetlands on the lot mm -hmm. if it looks like dots everywhere <laughs> that's obviously a problem well, the other thing too is if is if you've got a wetlands in front and, and you where, where you got a driveway in and then you're you're Upland is in the middle and there's a wetland in back. Now you're coming at it from both sides with 100 feet. You've lost 200 feet. But we do have that requirement now. Yeah, we already have that. Yeah. So it's already there. But, but if you're changing the. the but the, what but we're do, not. When, when but I, we are, we're not making it contiguous. That's the difference. Mm, right. So <clears throat> it was like the proposed 100 foot setback on vernal pools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I understand the the idea and the concern of protecting. Forty. I just think that. Um, so here's so here's how this is gonna look. So we've seen lots do this. We've seen lots. Um, I think it was the last one makes me think of Blaisdell off Church Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Here's my quick sketch. And we'll even make it fatter. So. All right. Exciting drawing, I know. <laughs> Here's the wetland. The street would be up here. Here's 200 feet of frontage. It's 37 and a half yep. side yard, 40 feet front yard. Here's that 100 foot. So you've basically got the rest of this, which is, uh, what is that, 60, 70? So, yeah, 60, 78 feet, right? That's what's left here. And then across, whatever, 37 and a half minus, so that's 125, something like that, of width. So we've seen smaller lots. Mm -hmm. You remember that one, Blaisdell? It was like a triangle, <laughs> tiny triangle. The building envelope was a triangle. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was really tight. This would be bigger. And we're not saying, and the septic, I think, isn't the septic, it has to be 75 feet? 75, right. So that can be a little closer. Well, no. It's 75 of the state, and that, that for lots that were created prior to oh, it's also March 2006, 2006, that it's uh, 75 foot, foot for them, but anything after that is 100. So septic systems can't be within the buffer. But the well could be. But the well could be, right. Yeah, 78. So that's 78. <laughs> so
So you're so I can hear I'm I'm hearing concern about that's tight. We've already seen tight. Mm -hmm. So I can bring that one back to show you. My concern is is that we're um, we're we're making it tougher than it already is. So I'm cognizant of the time. I think you have something else at 7.30, right? And so I don't want to interrupt this conversation if you wish to continue it, but I also just wanted to say that we brought this now because, as a draft because we wanted time to hear your input and make revisions. And so um, I've noted kind of the places where we still have some research and conversation, but we could have a back and forth around this issue in particular, and I guess there's maybe one other one that I noted. But anyway, I don't know if that's how you would like to proceed or... We could also reduce that buffer. Well, we, we were... Although that's a building buffer. We have right now a 100 foot. Right, right. It was a 75. Back. The state used to be 50, right? On what? On wetlands? Septic systems? No, just um, Buffer. buffers. There was, wasn't it? <coughs> so, I'm trying to think. Maybe it was the leach fields. I'm trying yeah. to remember whether or not it was for building or for leach fields that the state used to be 50 feet. Yeah, because they, they, didn't, they don't have any, didn't have anything with regard to buildings, the state. It was all associated it was with wetlands septic and tank and, and leach fields. So yeah, certainly coming back and discussing it further. Yeah, you know, I think yeah, I think yeah, this is there's particularly, probably a lot more discussion. Right, to be particularly yeah. considering that there's yeah. what we've got on yeah, the agenda. Yeah, we got quite a bit of stuff quite going a schedule on. tonight. Yeah. All right, well, food for thought, and next time I see you, there'll be even more exciting amendments discussed. <laughs> 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 Not wetland, but um, the. Jim Raymond and oh yes right right okay okay thank you very much for your time thank you good night thanks Rita and certainly if you have thoughts please email me okay okay 7 30 yeah we've got the continuation okay so we've got the continuation of the approval for access to a five lot subdivision in Northwood from Gulf Road in Deerfield New Hampshire The old plans. I don't know if he's got something different. Oh, thank you. They're happy with that. Good. These are the old plans. I'm okay. not sure if he's got something different. Yeah. Um, this is a I guess we'll just hold on to him and see what he's got first, yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Wait, great. Wait uh, for you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, as you. As you just stated, this is a continuation from uh, August when we were in here uh, with our subdivision proposal for Northwood. As you may recall, uh, Charlie Zilch from SEC and Associates. I was here with David Story, who's the builder, yeah. and I brought along Attorney Charlie Cleary with me tonight. Yeah. And I'm here on behalf of the actual property owners, uh, Richard and Ruth Nor uh, Norcross. And what we talked about is, is our proposal uh, of about a 17-acre parcel located uh, approximately about a mile east of the town line on Gulf Road. Uh, our proposal, uh, as it was conditionally approved in Northwood, is for a five-lot street lot subdivision of that 17 <coughs> acres. 
uh, part of the condition of that approval is to come to Deerfield uh, to get your blessing on the plan. So when we came in here uh, in August, rather, um, there was some issue with uh, ob obviously uh, the road itself and some pinch point right around Pleasant Lake. So I think the, the general consensus or opinion of the board, correct me if I'm wrong, at that time was to deny the application. So I asked for a continuation so I could kind of consider it. Uh, when I came to that meeting, my obvious thought is that you're probably going to be looking for some sort of uh, uh, contribution for roadway improvements, that sort of thing. I didn't expect um, across the board denial. So I was taken a little bit back by that. So I just wanted some time to reconsider what our options are and where we can go from here. And so I've been talking with Mr. Cleary about it quite a bit, as well as uh, Dave, who's going to be the potential property owner here. And just want to kind of get some clarification. So I'm going to let Charlie just ask a couple of questions, if that's OK. And then maybe we can get into some of the thoughts that we have on this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Charles Clear from Wadley Star Peters in Manchester. Um, I really only have the minutes from the prior meeting that I've read. And I've talked to Charlie Zilch a little bit about the, the situation and looked at the plans. Um, and I know that this board, one of your duties is to protect the public and make sure that there's a safe access to any new development. The odd situation in this scenario is that, uh, you know, Mrs. Story and the North Crosses went through the Northwood process, um, you know, spent time and money there, um, talked to them about situations, including the road, and had no idea or knowledge that there were any significant issues that would, would hold it up on Deerfield side. Um, and then to come here and, and to learn that perhaps no development is going to be allowed on Gulf Road was a bit of a surprise. And uh, I'm just looking at sort of a, uh, a fair situation to both the property owner uh, and the town. Um, so typically in this situation, I don't know if you've done any more research into it, because it's, it's a little unusual. Um, the planning board uh, talking to its fire chief and its, its police and, and other uh, agencies in town would have made a determination at some point along the way that enough development has happened on Gulf Road and that the hazard now exists and that there shouldn't be any further. And I didn't know if that time frame or number of housing units was looked into and where you are in determining when exactly sort of a hazard um, appeared? Well, the hazard's probably been there for a long time. Um, the road is extremely narrow. Yeah. It's 13 feet wide in the middle of the summer. Um, prior to that meeting, myself, Fred, and some of the other members have actually went out to the road and measured it, okay? Um, before I even lived in Deerfield, I had a friend who had a place on Northwood Lake and they had to access that. And I'm talking back in the 70s. It was narrow then, it hasn't changed. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, over the last 40 years, they've allowed things to continue and continue and continue. I guess at what point do you, you, you say, okay? Um, obviously, there's no. There's no way they can expand, expand into the lake. Yeah. Okay. And there's a lot of properties that are literally probably 25 feet, maybe 30 from the lake, which isn't even a 50 foot right away for that road. Now, guaranteed that road was put in long before probably all of us were even born. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing is that the town of Northwood, from what I can see over the last 50 years, hasn't built any access from the town of Northwood into there to service their people, okay? Um, my wife happens to be an EMT. Um, over the last 10 years, we've had ice storm, snowstorm, and the floods, which cut off access for the town of Northwood to get into service their own people. Um, you know, I, I, I guess it, it, at what point, you know, I mean, we could send our fire chief up there and, you know, and have him take a look at it. The road agent, they could take a look at it. I mean, it's most people's driveways are paved 
are about 12 feet wide, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I happen to be in construction and I build roads. Um, it's not a matter that I want to say no. I'm just trying to figure out how do we remedy a situation that's only going to get worse if we keep saying, oh, it doesn't matter, we'll let somebody else deal with it down right. the road. Oh, I totally understand that. Yeah. yeah, and I don't like to say no to people, but we have a situation there that under ideal conditions, it's only 13 feet wide. And the day that I went up to the measure, and I, I drive a one-ton dump truck for work, I had to pull off as far as I could possibly go to get a Prius to come by me on the left, okay? And that's in the middle of the summer. Right. And like I said, I, I don't like to say no to things, but, I mean, we've got a problem here. Yep. And I just don't know how much further you just say it's okay. That's, <laughs> that's my issue. Yep. And the other board members have issues as well. I mean, it, it's, it's really narrow. It's, it's barely safe, as we call it, a road right now, only because of the speed limit. You know, I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of where our general thesis yep. of why we're at this point, we, we said no. Right. That's, right. that's kind of where we're coming from. Okay. And this, and this is uh, probably, this is the first opportunity which Town of Deerfield has had an opportun opportunity to, to uh, provide input with regard to subdivisions that have taken place in Northwood off of Gulf Road. The, uh, the local plant, the plant, town planner for Northwood is the one that referred this to us. Prior to this point in time, Northwood was simply approving subdivisions there with, uh, with no input from Deerfield. Hmm. So it's not something where we have approved various subdivisions in the past in Northwood with access onto Gulf Road. We've never had that opportunity and we've in fact uh, complained about that fact uh, in the past. Okay. But uh, this is the first time that Northwood has actually uh, properly uh, given Deerfield the opportunity to, to provide input with regard to such a subdivision. And that's probably generally because the RSA has changed that where other towns have more influence now than they used to? I don't know if it's changed, but yeah. uh, this is Northwood finally yeah. realized that uh, right. we should have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, have an input on this. Right, which is, which is appropriate, uh, and it, which is why we're here. And I'm surprised because I think the minutes say there's 80 homes out there off of Gulf Road. There, there's there's more over that. More than that. There's 140. Okay. So this basically is a, we're looking, from Deer, Deerfield's standpoint, we're looking at 140 foot homes, 140 homes on a cul-de-sac. Yeah. That's what it is. So just from my perspective and, and uh, in talking with Charlie, I think to the extent that there is a problem, but that perhaps it is not a uh, imminent crisis problem where the town's thinking of closing the road or further restricting the road and certainly didn't notify Northwood or hasn't made a huge public outcry about the road. Uh, you know, Mr. Story went forward in good faith and, and asked the questions and proposes a five lot subdivision, which as a percentage against 140 units is fairly small, um, less than 5%. I don't disagree that you should take some action with respect to the road and perhaps limiting development. Uh, I think I want to talk also about other solutions, but sh in terms of notice and the opportunity to avoid the cost that he went through in the time, if it is not a absolute danger couldn't the notice to Northwood come following this approved subdivision and have the same basic effect that from this point forward, you're notifying Northwood, we are not going to allow access to future development. But this gentleman went through the process in good faith. Well, didn't uh, Northwood uh, planner advise the uh, developer of the fact that he'd have to come to Deerfield because of the uh, 
the requirements in the statute? Yes, but not, no mention of any prior. No, I guess the question is, was he notified prior <coughs> to getting his, his conditional approval? Or was it one of the items of the conditional approval? Prior to the conditional approval. Prior. So it was one of the items in the conditional approval. Right. But so it wasn't. It wasn't mentioned before any time? It wasn't mentioned prior to that, no. So in our, like I said, uh, Dave uh, had gone in there and talked with their planner uh, and asked if there was any restriction and he was told there wasn't. And I did the same thing on a separate, uh, at a separate time. It was basically informed the same thing. It wasn't until we were well into the process, which means the surveying was done, the wetland flagging, all that, uh, the expense had occurred, did we find, okay, now there's the RSAs in place, you're gonna need deer fields uh, review as well. But that was before you got conditional approval? Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's a... It was like a, it was like a week or two. Right. Was, was Just before. Say that at the beginning of the process. Because if, if they would have said... You were far into the process before you were made aware of it. Right. We actually went in with a conceptual hearing, too, prior to submitting final plans. It still doesn't change where we're at. Yeah. That's the problem. We got a road that's 13 feet wide when it's dry. Right. And I, I and, and like I said, it's not because I want to say no. That's not it. Yeah. The problem is we've got no room to work with. Well, ex except you have 140 people using the road, so we can't be completely inherently dangerous. It, it's some future or, or present concern is that you're at a tipping point. Is that not correct? I mean, otherwise... Well, the, the point being is, is where do you start? So you add five more? The tipping point should have been, you know, 50,000 ago. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's the real problem is, is, is we're dealing with it now when it probably should have been dealt with 20 or 30 years ago. Okay? How many less houses were there 30 years ago? Yeah. I'm sure that is probably easily determined through Northwood's tax records. The, the problem is, I mean, there's, other than buying land from people, how, how do you make the road wider? I mean, we're dealing with something that has been installed or built before probably most people in this room were concerned about this. Mm -hmm. and how far do we just say okay well we'll let one more in and, and the thing is the the longer that we keep saying yes Northwood doesn't have to build a road in for themselves totally understood but again it's a it's it seems like a significant issue that could have been disclosed at least to this Applicant. Well, yeah, you're right, but the town of Northwood could have taken this into consideration long before this gentleman went in. Yeah. They know that they don't have access to any of those lots, and they just, it was fine for them to continue to push through Deerfield to get those lots. But, but as a planning board, they must have safety, general safety concerns in their minds, and they didn't raise them. So I'm wondering. Well, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't really their road to worry about. Yeah, it's there. All right, but it's access to their right, project. and they have they should be accessing those lots also from their town, not necessarily through the town of Deerfield. And we have the same thing. We have another one on the other side of town that okay. we're dealing with too. Yeah, I have no knowledge of what it looks like on the other but side. The but the whole thing is 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 where where do you draw the line? Yeah, I know. It seems that we're picking this guy out and saying it's his fault, but I, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is is that, you know, I mean, what is the town of Northwood offered to do? They, they'll give you the approval, but they don't want to do anything to build an access road from the town of Northwood. Right. Because if, if 107 gets shut down somewhere, if the lake were to overflow the road up there, the only way to get in is through Deerfield. Which apparently has been what they've been doing, is approving right. it through your town. Um, I just assume that the two towns have common interests. You know, we're all 
sort of in this together economically and not to interrupt you but this gentleman besides me has been on the planning board a lot longer than I have <laughs> and um, and how many years that you've been doing this have other towns been working with us on anything well, Northwood hasn't worked with us at all okay um, <clears throat> Even like most of the other towns, it's it's they don't you know it's just like it's always like we focus on what we have. The thing is now it's it's things have changed a little bit. They're actually kind of looking at things in a bigger picture than they used to. Right. It's just a matter of you know I mean I I'm just I know I understand where you're coming from. You're saying you know it's. We haven't had the right situation yet to make it a bad situation. We've had some bad situations, but nobody really suffered. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it won't happen either. No, that's true. You know, and, your, and your job is to determine when that's going you to know, occur. It's, and like I said, you know, over the last 30 or 40 years, I doubt the town of Deerfield has ever, other than, uh, I've only been doing this for about 10, 12 years. The town of Northwood's probably never really considered anything. This is probably the first time that their planner or said, well, you know, we really should figure out what's going on and what Deerfield thinks about this. Because mm -hmm. obviously there's 140 lots out there already where that wasn't an issue. Right. And um, I. The problem is there's no space over there to remedy the situation. That's that's the big that's the big problem. I mean, have, what I know that's true. I know that it's narrow. But has anyone looked at the cost of acquiring some lands there and and doing well, something? Well, it wouldn't be up to us to acquire the land. Well, the town the town would do it. TFL could do it. Well, yes, I suppose we could, but it. It's not going to happen just because of this one thing. No, but I don't, unless you're, I, I don't know the situation, but if you're shutting off development at the, for this entire area, then I think there'll be some requests. Well, the entire it. area would be that area right where the, where the road is already up against the lake. Deerfield doesn't own that much of that area. No, but it's a town road leading to Northwood's property. Um, I think people expect it to be an access. I know Mr. Story did. Is there any, you know, again, I think the notice and the cost incurred is an issue. I understand I, I that. Told, your, your issue is an issue as well. Is there something the board would consider in terms of a number of lots that you could allow? Um, is have there been a lot of accidents and issues on the road in recent years? Or is it workable for the time being? And then I think you should give Northward formal written notice that you're going to make this decision. But I'm here for this particular applicant. What did, what happened with that entrance roadway? Who, who spearheaded that when they fixed the entrance? On Gulf Road? Yeah. yeah we ended up getting we ended up getting a grant uh, to uh, to re for reconstruction, and uh, the uh, the extent that Northwood participated was to provide some signs for us. So it gives you some indication of the extent of uh, of Northwood's involvement. Right. And we were we were able to upgrade the road for what about 400 feet, maybe 500. Yeah. And that's where the upgraded stopped because that's where the water and the road got really narrow. Um, that's the the entrance way from Gulf Road onto Route 107 North, which in the winter itself is challenging because it's probably at about a six or seven percent grade to get on 107 on a curve. Well, the other fact too is, is Deerfield only we only own about halfway across of that narrow stretch. Right. And Northwood has done nothing on his, their end to, to widen it either. 
Well, I think you're well within your rights, as I said, to notify Northwood that they need to take some action here. Um, I just wish you would give this particular applicant some leeway given what he's gone through to date and done everything by the book. You know, you went to Northwood and asked the questions. I mean, I don't, we're not asking for 25 lots. He's asking for five, but I think he's willing to reduce that if, if it addresses some of your concerns. Um, to my knowledge, people have been using the road, and I can, you're not closing it, so I think... Oh, we you, can't close it. Well, right, so you can make a decision that it's yeah. usable and I mean I, I mean, I suppose if we wanted to, we could put a... A barrier up right at the Northwood line, but that probably wouldn't go over too well. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, there, there has been some recent subdivision history on Gulf Road too. Uh, there's a there was a two lot as recently as 2015 that was right on the town line, so you would have been properly notified then. Uh, it, like I said, that was just a few short years ago, and that was allowed to go through. No, we weren't notified on that. You had to have been. It was on the town line, so you would be in a butter to the property. I don't recall. Hmm. I hope you were properly noticed. <laughs> what was, wh when was it? 2015? Yeah. yeah. What were the names of the? Uh, Richard Chandler. Right on the north side of Gulf Road. On the, just at the town. The line. Northwood side. So, okay, so it was, the right development the was in Northwood. But, right. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so yes. it wasn't in Deerfield. No, but it no, was in Deerfield. Deerfield, Deerfield town line. So like I said, yeah, we probably wouldn't have got the notice. No, the selectmen the selectmen might have got it. Sure. Okay. okay, which seen it. at that particular point, you know, and there was no referral to what? No, the they didn't board. refer it to us at the time. So obviously, we didn't get it. I'm not saying that they didn't send it, but the planning board didn't get it. And even then, it was still completely in Northwood, yes. and we weren't part of the conditional approval anyway. Yeah. So this is basically new for North Northwood to start doing it. Make, notifying the town of Deerfield for the subdivision on that, excuse me, off of Gulf Road. Um, I mean, there's a considerable amount of frontage to get, you know, from where the road was widened to Northwood in order to f upgrade the road. Um, you know, in order for the town of Deerfield to start upgrading the road, you're talking about going in and... Well, even if, even if we did anything, you'd only get halfway. Northwood has to do it, too. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that would have to be a plan. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, are, what suggestions are you thinking? Like, you're going to go from five lots to one lot? No, because we already. Have I didn't one think lot. so. No, <laughs> that's not that's not the point. I mean, I mean, just we're trying to we're trying to address the board's concerns while still protect the applicant's <clears throat> interests, given the situation that we're dealt with, which seems to involve. So it what? was what it was conveniently put on the town of Deerfield to make the decision. It's simple to give a conditional approval based on what we say, right? But they didn't. But no, to my knowledge, Northwood didn't say you've got a real issue with that road. Okay, but my point is they didn't have to because all they had to say it's a conditional approval pending what Deerfield says. Yeah. So they put it on us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so we're the bad guys. I'm not saying that. No, <laughs> that's that's the fact. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very unusual situation, Mr. Chairman. I exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they put it on us yeah. to make the decision. But they did. Not fair to him. Right. Is it passing the buck to us? Could it be with this recent notice, which you said is unusual, Mr. McGarry, from Northwood's planner, maybe there's a change in how they're seeing things and things are going to get better on their side? I don't know. <laughs> well, the, again, this was the first uh, first time that we've been we've been included in the approval process right. of any subdivision off of uh, Gulf Road. So what are you proposing uh, as an alternative? 
What you propose? Three. Yeah, reducing the subdivision proposal to three lots total. And then we go back to the town of Northwood and we are the messenger, basically saying this is uh, as a result of the issue with the access in. Uh, they reduced our subdivision to three lots and that's pretty much shutting the door behind us. Um, it's, it's not going to be a, a profitable subdivision for, for Mr. Story, um, but he'll be able to make do with the three lots. I think it's a, I think it's a reasonable compromise. It comes at a loss to Mr. Story, obviously, but we certainly understand your position. And uh, I think, like I said, it sends us back to the town of Northwood for approval again, and we also are the ones that um, relay the message as to where this board stands with any sort of development or future development on Gulf Road. Um, to be honest with you, I think uh, probably I think we need a site walk, and I think the town of Northwood needs to be there. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Because um, at this point, um, I, uh, I I think that's where we need to go first. I, I'm wondering if there also needs to be some sort of legal remedy to notify the purchasers of those lots of the concerns. Our, the town's Deerfield's concern about the access yeah, that's because something that I'm I I feel a little uncomfortable that at some point in the future we could, could be just held, sell some lots. We or we could be held liable yeah. if there's uh, you know an emergency situation or something that occurs yeah. there that uh, that they are aware that that they may not that, be able to get response that, emergency yeah. response. The public services might be unavailable. House might burn down before we can get there. Such Somebody like called an ambulance. agreement or something like that with the potential yeah, property you, owner. You may not get in. Well, it actually would have to hold the, all of those lots, not just the current ones. Everybody mm -hmm. that the town would have to. It's not our responsibility mm. to to for not that Deerfield and Northwood don't do mutual, but we already have 140 lots out there, and if you okay. And if you add more, you're adding the number, and it's happened. The road has been shut down before. And the ice storm shut it down right by Dale Transportation. Power lines were all over the road. Nobody was getting in and out of there. You weren't leaving Deerfield, and you weren't coming in from Northwood. And I know that for a fact because I was trying to get out of Deerfield. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't get out. Not that way, anyway. Right. So that right there, you know. So that would be the second part of the analysis would be what, kind, what are we talking about in terms of a cost to remediate the situation? It sounds like it's a Northwood and Deerfield potentially uh, involvement. Uh, you can assess a fair share to people coming forward with development, uh, but you have existing property owners, so t there is going to be a cost to the two towns. I guess the guess what we need to say is that this started a long time ago, and therefore we'll call it a lack of planning, okay. all right? Um, but like I said, I think the first thing we need to do before we go anywhere is that we need to have a site walk, and the town of Northwood needs to be there as well, whether it's their planning board or their selectmen, whoever. We can, we can have... Whatever we need, we can have road agents, everybody. I think, I think that's what needs to be done and before any decision is made one way or another. That's, that's kind of where I think we need to go. Are we going to be up against the 65 day? Oh, yeah, they, yeah. when did they come August, in? August, right? Yeah, they accept the jurisdiction. Well, this, it's a little different, though, of condition, but we have, uh, they first came in on, when did they come in? You said you came here in August? August 14th. Correct. So we're, we're still, we're getting close. it's been continued to tonight. Right. This so is it'd be one continuation. October 19th. Next week, or the beginning of the following week. Yeah. 
is one would have to take action. The next meeting again. This is a. <clears throat> so you want them in at the next meeting? Well, not necessarily. We, the, yeah, you our, said you want to our, meet first. Our yeah. clock is our clock run, runs out the nineteenth of October. Nineteenth of October, okay. which is a so, Saturday. So unless uh, unless the applicant is willing to uh, willing to extend, if they're not willing to extend, then we have to take action tonight. I think we'd, we'd like to request uh, at least a 30-day extension then. Well, how long is it going to take you to get uh, the town of Northwood, there's planning or selectmen or whoever, to give you a date that we can go on, or we'll have to choose the date and see whether or not they can do it? Should I just um, notify the full town circuit riders and, and ask them to organize it? Um, I think you're more interested in, in having planning board members there than... Well, I, I, I guess it, it's going to affect, like I said, they can have the planning board members, but they can have selectmen too because it's, you know, we, we get, we've got to make a decision on what's going to go on. We can't just keep saying it's okay, okay, okay. So, uh, however... If this board's availability, be, if I um, was able to organize something fairly quickly with Northwood... Well, do you want to do it on a Saturday or Sunday? Yeah, Saturday or Sunday I think would be best, yeah. best for us. Um, <clears throat> you want to do the 19th? The 26th? And we got this Saturday, which is the 12th. 19th probably be better. 19th? Yeah, Saturday is a holiday weekend. It'll give us a little bit of time. Okay. Get some people organized. Yeah, so you got... October 19th. Oh, October 19th, and then you have the 26th. Want to shoot for 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning? Yeah. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. Sure. 26th or the 19th? The 19th. Which day do you want? Yes. 19th. Okay, yep. and if, if uh, you can't get them there, you want to push it off to the 26th? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, so, so we're going to shoot for the 19th. Them the first option being the 19th, and yeah. the 26th is the backup. Okay, and then you would need to notify Jane so she can contact us. Okay, and I'll just keep it the same time uh, for both dates. Right. And by sidewalk, you mean the the road? We're going to go right. We're going to go right to the 13 foot wide section. That's what I figured. <laughs> and then probably, we can, can we walk. Right the we can launch? walk either way. There's, There's room at the boat launch to park for everybody. Excuse me. Did the boat launch? That's fairly close. To yeah, the this. Yeah, right. that's, yeah. Okay, that so would be the safest. There and then yeah, everybody would be off the road. Yeah, that would be the safest place to go. Because okay. certainly, from our standpoint, we don't really care about the uh, conditions with regard to the subdivision itself within Northwood. Yeah, we have no control over it anyways. Everything, everything for us is is the road, is Gulf Road. If we said if we said site walk to Northwood, they may misinterpret it, so I just right. want to be clear. Right. Yeah, we're looking at the road. Yeah. That's what we're looking yep. at. We're looking at the road. Okay. So you're, you're granting us a 30-day extension yeah, on our 65-day clock? Should we also continue this hearing as well? Yeah, that's what we'll have to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go 30 days from October 19th, which is roughly the, first beating. the 21st. No, November 19th, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the November, well, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, that's you December. Put, put it in for the first meeting in November, right? Uh, yeah, what do we got on that one? I, so far, nothing. Okay. That's why I want to talk to you guys about meetings, yeah, for November or December. Um, it would be the 13th. Okay, so that falls within the 30 days. That's fine. All right. Yeah, f after the 90 day, 65 day. Uh, okay, so November 13th. November 13th, yeah. Is the 30-day extension. Yeah. Uh, so I'll make a motion for continuation uh, to our meeting on November 13th. Yeah. A second. All those in favor? At what time? Why don't we say 7.15? We can get them okay. in first thing. 7.15. Moved and seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's what I do. Okay, then we get lot line adjustment. All right, so let's keep those. Yeah. All right. Application.
application for a public hearing for a lot line adjustment of 132 North Road LLC and Sean and Kelly Bresnahan North Road. In accordance with state statutes, you are hereby notified that the, uh, that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 9th, 2019 at 8 p.m. at the George B. White Building to consider an application for a lot line adjustment for 132 North Road, LLC, PO Box 185, Deerfield, New Hampshire, map 208, lot 8, consisting of 6.12 plus minor acres, and Sean and Kelly M. Bresnahan of 136 North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, 208, lot 9, consisting of three plus or minus acres owned by the applicants. The intent of the application is to adjust the lot line between 208 lot 8 and map 8 lot 9 point zero, excuse me, 0 0.061 acres will be added to lot 8. You are invited to attend this public hearing and offer your comments. You are unable to be present. The board will accept your comments in writing prior to the hearing and read them aloud at the hearing. Deerfield Planning Board. Okay. Um, yeah. Is, uh, you got letters from. Uh, yeah, we should have uh, cams. No, yeah, that's what I'm. Well, no, I get. I move things around. Right here. Okay. There we go. All right, this is um, Cam's notes on this particular thing. Um, lot line adjustment, map 208, lots 8 and 9, application of 132 North Road, LLC, Sean and Kelly Bresnahan, North Road, New Hampshire. Pony board action to be considered, open case, consider presentation, open to the public, review the planner comments. Um, Consider approving the application. I have reviewed the LLC and note the following. The existing map of 208, lot 8, is 6.141 acres. Map 208 is 9.10, which is three plus or minus 3 acres. The intent is to adjust the lot line between 208, lot 8, and 9, where lot 8 will receive 0 0.061 acres. I have no concerns regarding this lot line adjustment. Um, we accept the application. Uh, make, an app make a motion to accept the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good evening. Hi, Scott, Scott Frankowitz from New Hampshire Land Consultants. With me is the applicants, Sean Bresnahan and uh, Shane Carter. I think you had said most of what the application is. We're trying to do a lot line adjustment between lot uh, 8 and 9, tax map 208, swapping the exact same amount of land. Uh, so there's no need to go to DES for approval because the lots are staying the same. Uh, lot eight or, or lot lot nine will remain the three acres, and lot eight will remain 6.12. Uh, it's lot eight is gaining frontage on North Road, uh, approximately um, 54 feet. Uh, to add to his his existing frontage to bring his up to 300, which will go into play for the next application. And that's about it to this application. I do have reduced size plans too, if anybody's interested in a small size. A little bit more about the application. You should know what the uses are on the property. The three-acre one is a residential home. Uh, on the other property is a residential home plus Shane's business uh, in the back barn. Um, each have their own individual septics, wells, all three of them, um, state approved. Um, the, lot, the uses on lot eight are accessed by one driveway and of course lot nine has their own driveway as well. Yeah, it works. <laughs> 
I guess the uh, you haven't said any of your points yet, right? No, no. We'll wait until yeah after. Wise men. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like pulling them back out as things change. Especially resetting a stone bound if you ha you don't have to. Yeah. No. You see anything? No. no. Bill, no. any questions on it? Well, um, what was the uh, logic again for the change? Uh, the next application will will show we're going to propose a subdivision on lot eight on the next application. So, what the lot line adjustment was for is to gain the frontage for lot eight to have um, 400 feet of frontage, more than four, a little bit over 400 feet of frontage. So you'll be, you'll be eventually coming back into us on, on lot eight? They're coming next. Right. Next. Oh. It's the next <laughs> public hearing. That's, oh. They're scheduled for right. two. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I guess the... Uh, yeah, the only thing we need is to have the the uh, points set. Right. And we need a uh, a certificate certificate of uh, monumentation. So we can give it a conditional approval. Yeah. Subject to that. Subject are, to that. Are there comments from? Did you? Um, you didn't uh, have other any people. I don't oh, think yeah. there's. A, I'm sorry. There's anybody here? Did for anybody that have one? any issues? I don't think they're here for that. Okay. Um. Shane, you, I'm Shane. Cam, you, you looked at everything? Yeah, no, it, um, it, like you said, it's pretty cut and dry. Basically, kind of like Scott mentioned, this lot line adjustment is ultimately to, to gain the frontage uh, required for mm. their uh, minor subdivision. So, okay. I, I would like to add that Shane and I had been talking about this for a couple of years now. Yeah. And at that time, I didn't have any ground grandchildren, which uh, we do now. And um, my, my wife and I have uh, guardianship of them. So there are six of us that are living in our small home that we're going to expand upon. Mm -hmm. And in exchange for us giving Shane this uh, frontage to help him out, he is going to help us with uh, building an addition onto the house, you know, which is pretty important to us. Right. And, and just a comment too that uh, currently the the existing uh, colonial on on uh, lot lot eight change property is doesn't really meet the setback requirements, but uh, the new line will will uh, certainly uh, improve on the uh, on the setbacks, yeah. at least on the sideline, anyways. I think you should move it closer to 107. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can sell coffee. <laughs> well, no, people aren't going too slow right there. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll uh, make a motion for to grant conditional approval subject to a monumentation certification uh, from the surveyor uh, stating that all, all monuments uh, have been set. I second. All those in favor? And conditional approval. How long is it going to take you to, to set the uh, put your stone bound? <clears throat> yep. How long? You need what? 30 days? Oh, how long? Yeah, um, yeah I'd say 30 days is, okay. is okay. plenty. And, and with a 30 day limit. Okay. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Give me another one. <laughs> Okay, get this one. No, this is the next one. Okay. This is a subdivision. Okay. And these are plans for the subdivision. Okay. I'll get that one back. <laughs> and this one I can't get. <laughs> okay. We have an application for minor subdivision, uh, 132 North Road LLC, North, North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. In accordance with RSA 676-4, you are hereby notified that the 
132 North Road LLC, P.O. Box 185, Deerfield, New Hampshire, will make application for a public hearing to consider approval of a minor subdivision for the property located on North Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire, identified as tax map 208, lot 8, consisting of 6.12 acres owned by the applicant. The intent of the application is to create one new lot consisting of three acres. Lot 8 would then consist of 3.12 acres. The formal application will be submitted to the Planning Board of the Town of Deerfield on Wednesday, October 9th, 2019 at 8.15 p.m. at the George B. White Building. The Board will consider acceptance, and if accepted, the Board will hold a hearing, a public hearing at that time. You are invited to attend or offer your comments. If you are here, if you aren't able to be present, the Board will accept your comments in writing and read them aloud. So, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can I write anything on this one? Take it away, Scott. Okay. So what we're proposing on this lot is a two-lot subdivision. Um, with two, Both lots have about 200 feet of frontage. This one of them has a little bit more, I think. Um, as I said, as you said, uh, the lot's 6.12 acres. So we're subdividing uh, into two parcels. And the reason for that, I think, is, is kind of obvious, is that there's two uses on the property. And Shane would like to separate those uses, one being the residential home and the other being his house. What we've proposed for lot lines, they may seem kind of unorthodox here, but they're, they're for reason, for a septic system and for the well to stay on his, his business lot. Um, we kind of had to make those first jogs in the property, and then we kind of we split it as best we could in the back of the property that goes out uh, to the pond out back. So existing a lot nine, like 6.12 acres, 400 feet of frontage, the use is office, storage, and, and residential. Uh, they both have separate septics and wells, and they both access the same driveway, and uh, there's a driveway permit in place for, for that. That was approved years ago. What we're proposing is a two-lot subdivision. Both systems are state approved. Wells are, are functioning. Every, everything's functioning fine. We're, so we're not changing any uses or really creating any any additional stuff uh, it's an additional lot but it's not an additional use the proposed lot eight and these numbers may change with the tax with the tax assessor may not use these numbers but i used eight for the existing house is three acres 2.49 acres of upland with 200 feet of frontage and then the remaining other land on eight dash two is 3.12 acres with 2.89 acres of upland 200 feet of frontage and of course there's prior to this you were talking about how much area contiguous upland and stuff there's obviously plenty of that on on these lots because of the existing uses are in place and there's no proposed changes to those uses at this time and i think that wraps up this application do you uh, do you have state subdivision approval we don't yeah i like to go to the for a, a meeting and either Get it conditionally approved or get it at least going in the town to make sure everything's not going to change mm -hmm. and then we'll submit to state sub okay. um, one other thing i didn't point out mark west was a wetland scientist on on both the lot line adjustment and on this subdivision cam did you have any uh, comments i didn't read uh, it's okay uh, we sylvia and i reviewed this uh, we've been had an inquiry from dot regarding some more information about the driveway, but uh, we both had no concerns. So you do have currently a a, a driveway permit there. At yeah. The, yeah I, um, basically, where your snow bound is going to be. Yeah, we'll have to bury bury that into the 
you know, put it down six inches to a foot and then yep. and bury it. Oh, because that's the only access the state granted for a driveway permit? That's yep. that's the existing driveway. Right. It was approved back in 1988, and, and Shane actually had a copy of the, the permit. So is there approval number on that? Yeah, it's on the cover sheet. Okay, you do have it on here? Yeah, okay. on the, Shows the agency approvals we show on the cover sheet and DES and then DOT and DOT has the date and the, the number. Is that over there? Is that anything your general notes or what? No, right at the on the cover sheet about near the bottom of the sheet, right above my stamp. Oh DOT yep. okay. DOT driver, yeah. Yep. Okay. And there's no an anticipated problems getting DES for approval as well. Right. So. I'm not, not overly excited about the configuration, but uh, <laughs> it uh, meets their requirements. It's understandable. So. Okay. It's already kind of a mess anyway. Yeah. I don't have any questions. Uh, Is a any, uh, any from the butters? Yeah. Curiosity: do, Have you uh, have you had uh, Patterson approach you at all with regard to some type of access? I can't answer that. Yes, I have. Yeah. It's, uh, I know that's one that I've been watching. The uh, they haven't gotten a building permit at all yet, but uh, the current at current driveway that they've got has got zero sight distance to the south. And uh, yeah, it's good. that doesn't bother you. Oh, it doesn't concern you. But uh, we just got a letter from the state on that as well. Oh, we did. I okay. gave Mark a copy. Okay. They want that driveway removed. Okay. Yeah, as I told Rick and yeah. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, send a copy to the uh, John Harrington too. Oh, give a okay. Copy to him. Okay. Yeah. Anybody in the audience? I think they're all here for the last one. Okay. Uh, let's see. So. What do you need? You're going to be what? Setting setting points going back to the. Right. The back, we'll have one. Back corner. We'll have four rebar and, and a yep. bound up front. So this is a new one. And, and a new, a new granite bound too. Metal next to it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't uh, we're all set. Is there? Is it? I just have one question that Shane asked me. If we could do that front, where we're showing it as a bound as a rebar. Instead, so we can put that down in the ground, and it I was going to say, once you bury the granite, and throw a piece of rebar next to it. Yeah, that way you can find it too. But we do have to do the granite as well. <laughs> well, it, it it might be better in the yeah. long run, only because somebody digs it up. Oh, <laughs> let's say you hit a chunk of granite. They're going to go. Oh, so, I mean, if the granite's down a foot and there's a piece of rebar. Next to it, it can be found. Oh, what do you think, Scott? Yeah, it could be. It just obviously easier to put a rebar in. Yeah, four okay. by four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like the idea of the granite bound though. Mm -hmm. Let's put a metal. Get one of those Scott Frankowitz things. Stick it on top of the granite. Well, I don't want to put it on the rebar, and then they'll think we set too much. Oh no, no! I put it on the granite and then uh -huh. bury it. <laughs> uh, well, I'll. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, grant uh, conditional approval subject to uh, Cert the uh, certification. certification and monumentation. And uh, I don't see anything else. You guys see anything? No. Except the other mountain, I'm not sure. With, uh, uh, what do you need? 30 days? Conditional approval? Uh, just because we have to get state subdivision on this, if we could get more, like, say, 60 days and, on this and one. state subdivision, yeah. Yeah. So 60 days? 60 days? Yeah. Okay. And Second. And I guess you can re end up revising 
You'll be revising the plans, showing what the state's up or this year one putting that on the front sheet. Yes. State subdivision approval, and uh, and maybe well, I was going to say maybe you can take and revise the plan, just showing that uh, those monuments have been set rather than right. Yeah. Rather than to be set. In 60 days. Yep. Second. Second. Bill seconded. Okay. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I can't believe it. It's 8:30, and that's time. We're on time. We're trying. Well, I thought these would go quick. I was hoping. <laughs> All right. We got another one, right? Yeah, I got one more. And it's scheduled for 8.30, so that's sort of... Wow. How are we doing that? I don't know. <laughs> In accordance with... Okay, we get... Excuse me. 8.30. Application for public hearing for a minor subdivision for Kings Grant, South Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. In accordance with RSA 676-04, you are here been notified that Kings Grant LLC PO Box 1374 Concord, New Hampshire will make application for a public hearing to consider approval of a minor subdivision for property located on South Road, Deerfield, New Hampshire. Identified as tax map 420, lot 24, consisting of 162.9 acres owned by the applicant. The intent of the application is to create two new lots, each consisting of 12 acres. Lot 24 would then consist of 138.9 acres. The formal application will be submitted to the Planning Board of the Town of Deerfield on Wednesday, October 9th, 2019 at 8.30 p.m. at the George B. White Building. The Board will consider acceptance and if accepted, the Board will hold a public hearing at the time. You are invited to attend or, and offer your comments. If you are unable to be present, the Board will accept your comments in writing and read them aloud at the hearing. Any letters? No, uh these are the plans. Okay. I don't have any If you're going to describe what uh, what's going on here, or what? I'm Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Presentation. Okay. Hey, how you doing? I'm uh, Neil from Promise Land Survey. Uh, you you basically summed up what what we're proposing here. Um, you could look on the the last page. It's kind of a cleaned up page of just like the the subdivision page. We're proposing a three lot subdivision. Uh, two of the lots will be uh, residential lots. They have 600 feet of frontage each, and they're both uh, 12 acres. Um, the one that's uh, more westerly there, that, that building envelope itself is, is over three acres. And then the easterly one, that, that building envelope there, is, is just under three acres. 
So they're uh, significantly oversized lots with uh, 600 feet of frontage. And then the remaining lot will have, uh, as you can see, it's broken up with two sections of frontage, just create you know, extra buffer space up against uh, abutting properties uh, on either side. And that, that remains with, it has 200 feet of frontage to the west there. And then in the, the center there between the two residential lots, there's 348 and a half feet of frontage. These lots, uh, they don't need uh, NHDES uh, subdivision approval because they're over five acres. And we do have, we, we just received uh, one of the residential lots does have an approved septic design on it uh, currently. We didn't have it in time for the application, but there is actually one on it now. So there is uh, a septic design for the, the easterly lot. It's up against uh, Peter Moore Road there. So I think it, Pretty, pretty straightforward and simple. It's the, the remaining lot is going to remain as is with uh, two residential lots uh, proposed. Do you accept this? No, we haven't accepted oh, yeah, yeah. this. We'll make a motion to accept the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The back property is pretty much all wetlands. It, some of it is, and it's. If you notice that the, the overall is given a plus minus area there because yeah. it, it actually runs up against the stream in the back, so it's the thread of the stream that's way out back that is uh, why it's plus minus because it's you can't necessarily definitively locate a stream uh, consistently. Uh, there's wetlands through. All throughout, there's uh, there's other pockets um, out back. Uh, at one point in time, years ago, this was we had done the work, and this was actually proposed to be a continuation of like High Meadow Drive. So we had like a concept subdivision, and a, yeah. boy, I can't remember how many lots were in there. There was a significant amount of lots once you got past the front section where the wetlands are. So there was a few crossings under that proposal, but once we got out back, there was there was a, a number of lots out there. So it does open up so that it's less wet, but then when you get way out back, you actually run into the stream there. It would probably be good to have the, uh, the area of uh, upland soil and, and wetlands. Probably is, well, it certainly appears to be plenty, but uh, just to show that uh, on for the two lots, yeah, yeah. As 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 mentioned, the uh, the building areas for, you know, those lots are, are roughly three acres, and that's just the portion of building area in the front of the lot. So there's there's a significant amount of building area there. So it's got over three acres uh, without any restriction. Are you talking about the building envelope up front? Yeah, yeah. It, that's over three acres without any restrictions. You know, without setbacks or wetland setbacks or anything. Like have that. it on the plan. Yeah, just have it have it on just, the plan. Just note it on a plan. Note the contiguous area there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and the area of wetland stuff. On each lot. On each each of the two lots. Yeah. Just the residential. Yeah. Just okay. those two lots. Yeah, don't. don't Obviously, don't bother bother with that for the re remainder. It's just those two lots. Okay. Uh, what's the uh, what's the width of South Road and the what? Uh, Russell, east northeasterly corner of lot uh, of the of the easterly lot. Can can you say that again? Make sure I followed that. What's the width? What's the width between the between the stone walls of uh, South Road on the uh, south, uh, southeasterly corner? Yeah. It's across from a map. Northeasterly corner. Lot forty-eight A one dash one. Yeah. What do you got there? You got your. That's the actual mm -hmm. corner of the lot right now. Correct. Yes. That yep. one's already there. Yeah. So what do you have for road right away there? Uh, we, as we went through what we located for stone wall on both sides, we called that out as, as variable width. We didn't get the uh, consistent measurement between stone walls. I mean, some of that stone wall, if you've been along there, is, is, is really nice. It's in good condition. It's been, it's been redone, and I'm not sure exactly when that was or if it was done. Did you get a variable width? Yeah. What was it, roughly? Um, I actually don't have a s s scale on me. 
I would have to kind of rough it in here. Let's see if that's, that's 13 feet. Balls on both sides. Yeah. I don't know, roughly in the range somewhere of getting close to 40. So we're probably 10 feet, 10 feet short of a 50 foot layout. Yeah, and that's just, that's just roughing it in. And, and like I said, we measured along there in a number of different spots, but we just got variable width between what we thought was, you know, original boundary on, on either side of the road there. And typically what we've ended up requiring in the past is uh, where where the width, uh, the apparent width of the right of way is uh, less than 50 feet, that uh, we would require uh, the uh, the applicant to either dedicate or or provide an easement uh, for half of the shortage. So if we're only 40 feet in there, we'd be looking for an either dedication or, or a five foot uh, easement, one of the two, construction easement. Just for road maintenance. Okay. Road maintenance or road construction. And, but that that appears to be the narrowest section. I, rather, uh, Looks like where High Meadow is, you're you're close. What? Yeah, it's definitely pretty close. That's a hundred. That's a hundred scale on on this plan. We're looking on sheet two, three, sheet sheet two. I'm looking at sheet two. So. I'll go to sheet two. Okay. Across the High Meadow. Yeah. Be pretty close in there, on based on a hundred scale. On uh, lot the proposed lot, this one to the west. Yep. Um, is it the property line go like that? That that, that corner there. Uh, yeah, according to the, the the plans that we have, it does have that jog, that seven point. Hmm. It's a seven point five three foot jog, which is, it's kind of one of those other interesting things that's along the frontage here. That's why we called it out variable width because we have plan information that gate, shows that like jog. A, is there a break in the rock wall or something there? Uh, it actually jogs back to like a little bit of a fence in there. I yeah. Think. I think on the. the the oh, topography so just, page, you can see where the fences are. It just, this, you just look at that one section there, it's just, just asking a question. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a fence section through there. But that, that's what, you know, the, the plan of record, that's what they had along there, that jog. Um, Bob? I don't have any questions. Bill? No. Can Cam have any? Cam had yeah, some. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, that's okay. Um, I, I just have a question. I'm in my own world, Cam. <laughs> um, on the, under the waiver requests on the plan set, um, the first one, a request to rate waiver requiring the plans that take subject boundaries defined by meets and bounds. Um, I'm just wondering why that's on there. Um, you know that there are poles shown on here and things like that on the plan so i'm just curious yeah that that really that waiver was placed on there in in reference to showing the entire meets and bounds of the yeah. oh. a whole 160 what is it, 162 Good. acres sure. so rather than doing that we we chose to kind of zoom in on these lots so you could actually see these up close and you know the the cover page we have the overview there so you get a general idea of what it looks like but we wanted to focus in on the the main area of development it with the understanding that the rest was basically going to stay in remainder anyways so that would be the the description of it is the, that original plan of record okay thank you it, it typically our concern is that uh, the uh, remaining parcel is, meets the minimum of three acres and obviously it's more than enough, so uh, I, you know, I don't think there's any need to, to have mm -hmm. it fully surveyed for the for the mm -hmm. rest of it. Uh, your name? And this is Ben and the, uh, Is there an extra plan that I could look at? You can take this one right from my hands. <laughs>
in the future, because next time you come into us, yeah, um, we're uh, we've got a uh, projector, uh, which we're going to be getting a screen. So hopefully, we're going to be uh, all all the applicants, at least the surveyors or engineers, will be able to plug into that uh, outlet right outlet there on the wall and feed information to their projectors so that people in the audience will be able to see see the plans projected onto the wall and uh, we're trying to update yeah that's i mean that's <laughs> a, it's still 21st it's a, century it's a good idea <laughs> i like pdfs so keep that in mind plan sets. next time you come in <laughs> we're trying to get rid of the chisels <laughs> uh you have any questions sir yeah i do the uh I live on Cowley Road, and the Peter uh, Moore Road goes all the way through to Cowley Road, okay? The problem is on Cowley Road, you can't get there from here unless you go through Candy. Right. Now, they've had a problem this past mud season, two days, it was closed down. People were parking on the pavement and walking in, all right? The, uh, is the town of Deerfield is planning to do anything to, you know, uh, protect the safety of the residents that actually live on Carter Road in Bow Acres? You know, if Peter Moore were to be opened up, it would allow access without having to go <coughs> into Candia. All right, uh, Candia is basically holding us hostage <laughs> at this point because. We have no say. We can't do anything about it. Like I say, it was closed down two days this year, mud season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that lives on the road that drives a tractor trailer, okay, during mud season when it's posted in Candy with 12,000 pound limit. But he continues to drive a tractor trailer through the road, which doesn't help. He lives there. Uh, he lives there. Yeah, he lives there. He lives on the yeah. Candia side, right across from where I... Where my oh, so he lives in Candia, but drives on the Deerfield section to get home? Well, he... you got to understand, Carrier is a horse field. Yeah, yeah, right. And yeah. he's just around the bend, so he has to... He actually makes the whole loop with the truck, okay? But he can't turn it around. Huh? Because he can't turn it around. Well, he backs into his lot. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, but my, I don't have a problem with the tractor trail on a road. Only during mud season when it's posted, you know, keep, and that's candy. If Deerfield didn't post this year, usually they do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they would have come to Deerfield to complain. So, Mark didn't post, so can't say anything. But candy was posted, and he's still driving the tractor trailer and you know I went to them and you know, that's a whole nother issue. Candy but should be enforcing that. My concern that. is you know being a Deerfield resident you know it's gotten to, I've been on that road about 38 years so I'm not here just to complain as a new you know additive okay. I've lived with it and haven't had a problem with it until this year when it was closed for two days all right, I, that's it, a safety issue in itself, okay? Mm -hmm. And <coughs> at this point, Deerfield has no way to rectify it other than the possibility of opening up Peter Moore Road. Now, let me continue on. If the town had any interest in doing that, I'd be willing to talk to them and possibly help in some way. Now, Would that have to go for a warrant article? Yeah. This, yeah. This lot also would have to be the, part of it, and that's why I bring it up now. No, it, it would have to be proposed as a warrant article. Yeah, well, and, however the planning board uh, I mean, or the town it itself. would It would just be a matter of what bringing it up to the select board? Yeah. Because they would yeah, have to make that decision, board. right? To reopen a road? Oh, yeah. And you certainly could be done as a citizen petition as well. Um, that's well, what Fred just said there is a, I mean, all the people on Courier Road could petition that. Yeah, because, yeah. because, you know, a petition to get it on as a Warren article 
gets it up in front of the whole town to vote it. Now, unfortunately, some people who live on the other side of town probably not might not want to spend the money to oh, open up that road. I'm just, just yeah, making no, a, I, you, you know I, what I'm saying. The real world, I understand, you know, everybody's um, concerned. You know. Because we're easily talking hundreds of thousands of dollars to, oh, yeah, uh, to open that up. Well, that's why I said, you know, I do want to talk to town, kind of possibly, you know, help in one way or another. I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. Your name? Spencer Tate, 174 South Road. I'm going to butter to the site. Yep. Um, as a release of Peter Moore Road, that was discontinued completely, 1926 Article 11, which extinguishes public rights of travel. Uh, it was upheld, and it doesn't predate 1967. Uh, 20 year adverse possession claim, 1989, there was a warrant article for reopening. Town Council concurred that reopening it would require offering up from uh, abutters to, uh, to offer the road, otherwise, you'd have to end the domain. It. And that, yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, there's no money. <laughs> right, so I just kind of wanted to clarify the record, I guess, more so than anything, but it's yeah. uh, um, pretty well established that discontinued. As far as Courier Road goes, um, we have another subdivision issue that's. The one for five. Yes. Up the other town. And one of the recommendations. They already did. There's seven, eight lots available right now on the back district to the farm. Well, what we they did. They just did the subdivision there. Now they've got the other five up the other end. Right. On that five that we've been involved with, yep. we've asked for, I think we asked for 10 feet, maybe 15. It was 15. 15. It was 15 yeah. feet. Because when we did a walkthrough there about a month and a half ago, yeah. one of the things that I noticed was that the road is built like this. So you know what I'm talking about. And I, and I said to him, I said, one of the things that, would be that we'd be looking for is 15 feet to make the road wider to plus, to, plus a drainage it. for for drainage yeah and actually have them install the drainage because of what's going on there but i, I can't get too sidetracked because we got to deal with this just so you know yeah. and <laughs> the Victoria road when they uh you set did the two lots they part of that subdivision was Five feet given to the town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got to get back to this yeah. one. <laughs> no, no. But, but I, and I brought it up because, you know, this. No, I understand. Yeah. And it abuts this Peter Moore Road. Yeah. Went all the way. Yeah. So I didn't know if, you know, it would be a proper time where we are stuck on the road, but it's not their problem. It's not their issue. Right. But based on what you just said, it's almost impossible. Yeah. It's just it's for yeah. yeah. Unless you well, went the, down eminent domain, which the, is just you know, the battle the was it years, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it put before the state? Because that's one of the conditions, I believe. That was that after the town vote, it's got to be put before the state. That was after 1949. This is 1926. It's not required. I think Mr. Tate has done his homework. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, <laughs> the professional byproduct. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can get you more information. Right. It, it, was, it was after 1949. Okay. I, I don't have the date, but I would have had to gone out and put in a state after it was approved for the town. Because public roads were discontinued by town vote and such actions were recorded in town report, in town report, best evidence of discontinuance is official record. Okay. Thank you. 
We, uh, we have a vacancy for uh, alternates on the planning board if you're interested. I talked about that the other day. <laughs> don't think. Just, I, I suggest Listen, that. all you got to do is just go sign up and fawn down. You don't even have to think about it. <laughs> no exams. Come on, this is exciting. <laughs> yeah. I suggested that. Um, I looking for people. Okay. Mr. Tate, have any comments? Yeah. Did you have comments about this particular plan? None pertinent to the, uh, the application. Okay. All right. So Cam, you already asked your question. I was just, I didn't want to ignore Cam. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. I didn't want him to feel bad. <laughs> Did you have anything? No, I have no other. Okay. Questions yeah, he had written a couple of things down. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I know. <laughs> all right. I'll uh, I'll make a motion to uh, grant conditional approval subject to uh, certificate of monumentation, uh, showing also showing the uh, area on both uh, proposed lots of uh, upland soil and wetlands. Uh, you can express it in, in acres rather than in square feet. You can do it both, whatever if you, but uh, considering the size that uh, square feet is probably an overkill. And, uh, and, and all the fees have been paid, I assume. And, yeah. Yeah, okay. And how long it take to uh, set your points and uh, also uh, <coughs> revise the Revise the plan. 30 days, 60 days? Probably 60. All right. Okay. And uh, so conditional approval for 60 days. Get a second. Second. Bob, you're all set? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So you don't have to come back in. It's just a matter of submitting your, your monumentation certification and also revised plan. Okay. I don't need it. If you'd like to keep it, you can. Yeah. Okay. If you want to keep it, that was. Um, I did want you to. One of the things is to look at the dates. Oh. For December. Oh, right. For November and December. November and December. All right. Well, uh, we can make the last meeting on November 13th. I'll see you guys in February. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, well, Thanksgiving's on the 21st or the 28th? It's 28th, right? 28th. Okay. Our meeting would be the night before Thanksgiving and also oh. Christmas Day. Oh, let's go Christmas Day. That would so, be fun. I figured... You'll know, see who shows up. Yeah. I won't be here, okay. so... Okay. <laughs> so, we're not going to be going when... He's not going to be here. We might as well not show up. I, 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 hey, I unlocked the door, so, so you wouldn't be able to get in anyway. So, if we want to have two meetings in November, do we want to go the 13th and the 20th? Does it look like we'll need to? Right now, no. I mean, tonight was exceptional. I had Skip yeah. asked if we could make room for it, and it worked out. I mean, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, we weren't, you know, and I thought the other how about two. You, how about just one meeting? In, uh, that's I'm, I'm good with that. With one me. in November. That would be the 13th, because that's the that's, second Wednesday. And yeah. that's, we've already scheduled in the Gulf Road people. Okay. Right. So, yeah. And that's our normal date anyway. Okay, so. so and then, let's see. We're going to need... We need to talk with the Conservation Commission on the, their, their proposed changes. Like most of them are okay. It's just a matter of that. Of that uh, well, right now I have nothing for November or December as far as All right, that. so December 11th is this, excuse me. Is our normal day. Normal day. Yeah, we don't want to meet on the 25th. No. <laughs> so we'll, right now we should have one schedule for November and then one scheduled for December. December that's fine. And, but we, we're going to need to talk to the Conservation Commission and also... So are we going to have... You guys are Sylvia's talking about another change, too, based on discussions with Rick? That's next week. Yes. Uh, next so meeting, excuse me. Next next oh, meeting. that is next yeah, meeting. Okay. She's, she's going to bring that I, up no, at the next okay. meeting. Are we trying to make this thing with the 
uh, Conservation Commission warrant article to get voted on in March? Is that what this is all about? That's what it's all about, yeah. Okay. So is, is, so is the Conservation Co Commission coming in? I have meeting? no, they, they were gonna, they were gonna talk to Sylvia again, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I could ask Sylvia tomorrow what she thinks and could send you an email. Yeah, I uh, see I just, it. I'm not. Yeah. I haven't been involved. They in haven't the made an appointment, and oh. she hasn't asked okay. me. Okay. How busy is our next meeting? We have, uh, let's see, I've got uh, Courier Road coming in. The 23rd, right? This is the 23rd. Uh, uh, let's see, Cassier is continued, and we have a uh, watershed ordinance thing, the application for Tobin's bringing that in. Okay. Okay. So I have... Uh, so we're three appointments plus water. Sylvia wants to be on for the uh, proposed zoning and the CIP. On 23rd. On the 23rd. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's, oh, let's yeah. That, we don't want to squeeze the Conservation Commission out on that, too, right? I think we'd be too busy. I don't know how busy. I don't know how long well, Courier Road will um, I don't know, am I being naive on this water thing on the Conservation Commission? Uh, I, I, well, this, I, I, just I, a couple of minor corrections, and, and, and then what they're going to propose with regard to this one acre contig contiguous. That I have a problem with. Yeah, I know, but they've... <laughs> no, I'm, no, they got to come in and tell us what they want to do. Yeah, right, no. exactly. So, so I don't know how long they're going to take to go over everything. How They only I, meet once a month. They only meet once a month, yeah. So, so, I, so does that mean we push them off to the 13th in November. of November? Yeah, I just in. That's basically a month from now. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so I can pencil them fair. in for the 13th. Right. We could probably plan on them for what, 45 minutes or something? So whoever's going to be. Well, Gulf Road is coming in on the 13th already. We just yeah. scheduled that. Yeah, well, that, that shouldn't so take that long. It really shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And if we have our walkthrough. Which is either going to be the 19th, which is next Saturday, or two weeks, yeah. the right. 26th. Right. And I mean, I mean, it could it could go long, but unless we can put the conservation commission in for the 11th of December, if you want. No. Well. Well, what, but the we thing got, is, we got to be prepared to do our uh, noticing, with public hearings. Oh. So we want them for the November members. 13th. Oh yeah. yeah. November 13th for them. Yeah. Okay, I'll put them in. Seek. And Come then, <clears throat> because if we're only going to meet, okay. uh, well, December, we have the 11th. The 11th, you know, and then if we had to, we could do week, you know, yeah. contiguous. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th and the 18th if we had to. But at this point, let's just stick with a meeting on the 11th okay. for That's December okay. yeah and then we'll have to make that call and then we'll we can at that one we can schedule a public hearing because we'll need regardless of how this contiguous thing works out the right. rest of the changes are still we still need a, a, a public hearing right so, so I just to clarify you this is now the wetlands discussion will be in December or November, November 13th. 13th. Okay. November 13th. Okay. November 13th. So at this point, we're just going to schedule appointments for November 13th and December 11th. Right. Yeah. I won't schedule anything for Christmas Day. Hmm. Manifest? Oh, yeah, the manifest. Uh, 28 the hours for Jane Boucher? Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, minutes. We should do minutes. What do I? I, just, I gave everybody a copy of the bond um, from Megasource right here. Oh, okay. I don't know if they, they, they need an answer like right away. It, I, it looks okay to me. Sylvia thought um, it looked okay. It's twenty. It's ten thousand dollars. It's pretty much what they've done in the past. They've Next. already submitted. It's their already check. effective. Yeah. Well, that's what. It's it effective. It was effective on October first. Okay. She just needs. And, and I can. It was okay. sealed and signed and. Uh, do we need a 
We need a vote on that? No, I, I don't think there's a vote. I just. No, we, we got it. Because we, she just we already made that part of the yeah. conditional yeah. approval. So we, conditional. Yeah, so we're yeah. good. Okay. okay. I can just let her know that. <coughs> okay. Yeah. No, I only have minutes for last meeting. All right, I got the August 28th. So, no, you weren't. So I'll, uh, I didn't see anything wrong with those. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, August 28th. All those in favor? We need a second. Second. It was me, Bob, and, uh, and Bill who were at that meeting. Who seconded? You made Bill. Bill, Bill seconded. Bill, okay. This is August 28th. It's approved. Okay. Uh, we get a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Okay. <laughs> It's hard to abstain from ice cream. Uh, September 25th. I got a, a couple of corrections. Okay. Uh, 25th? Yeah. Page 3. About a uh, third of the way down. Fred McGarry said a 12 inch culvert under each driveway should be sufficient, and, and you, you didn't get catch Pete's comment that it should be 15. Yep. Okay, so, so you're Pete, saying Pete call for 15 inch call oh, okay. yeah under each okay. driveway and this is for candy okay <clears throat> and uh, then on the last page page four starts off with uh, 18,000 uh, to dropping to 15,000 uh, and just for for uh, clarification, it should be for planning services uh, provided by Southern Hampshire Planning Commission. Our planning services provided by Southern Southern Hampshire Southern Planning. Hampshire. And then, did you change the screen to an 84, or did we go to 72? Uh, bigger than 84. Yeah, we went to we went to ninety six, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we want to change that seventy two to ninety six. Well, it? we talked about that, but so yeah, we'll just leave it alone. Just leave the, it alone. The price the price it got three hundred and fifty bucks. I can't beat that. Uh, no, mm -hmm. and so it's electric and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, what we voted on was forty one thousand nine oh eight, not twenty one. Oh, for, oh, 41. Big difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll approve that, all right, right? A bunch of committee. Oh, yeah, they'll be, they'll be happy yeah. to tell. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, 41908. All right. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, September 25th with the corrections noted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And I wasn't here. here. You weren't here. Yeah. I'm abstained. Okay. Um, so Bob abstained. I was wondering if I did we do the September 11th? 11th. That's what I was. I just, don't. I don't have them. I I brought them because I don't think we did. I don't know who was you, here. You, you, you um, weren't here. I believe I was Peter here. was here. I was here. Fred Robert was here. wasn't here. Fred, I wasn't. You weren't here. So it's just three of us, right? Pete, Bill, and Bob. Yeah, that, yeah I think that's right. It was just yeah. three. Yeah, I've, I've got the 11th here. I didn't have any comments. I don't, I don't have a comment, a copy of it in front of me, but I think there was one issue I wanted to clarify. Oh. And that was on um, a proposed subdivision, uh, open space subdivision. Uh, was it Middle Road? Jeff, you, you, oh, Jeff White. Jeff White came in and ta asked.